All right, today I'm building a piece of furniture and putting a router in it. It is complete with adjustable fence, modular bit storage, call it storage, and throat plate storage. And of course, dust collection. All right, so let's get started. All right, the scrap wood in the shop is getting a little bit out of hand, so I went around and gathered up all the pieces of cherry that I could find and laid them out with all the uh, different components for this build, and it looks like I'm going to be able to get the entire build out of all the scrap wood and not have to buy anything. So uh, here we go. So at this point, I'm just getting everything squared up and milled up to its final thickness, and then I'll cut everything to its final width and, uh, and length as I go. And I'm starting out with the legs. Right, I'm bringing the legs to their final width and then I'm going to set up a stop block on the fence with my miter gauge so I'm guaranteed to be able to cut them to the exact same length. Now that all the legs are cut to the same length, I'm going to lay out the joinery and I'm going to lay it out on just one leg and then use that leg to transfer the joinery marks to the other legs. That way I know they all turn out to, to be exactly the same. All right, to secure the workpiece to route out the mortises, I'm just going to pinch it between a couple of dogs. I've plunged my router bit till it makes contact with the workpiece, and now I'm just going to use a couple of spacers to set my turret, and this will set the depth of cut for my mortise. I routed out a starting and stopping point, and then connected the two with a few shallow passes. All right, now that I have all the mortises cut in the legs, it's time to route a dado to accept the side panels. So I'm just resetting the depth of cut with uh, another spacer, and then I'm gonna route them all out. All right, now the side panels, I made at 3 eighths of an inch thick just because they're gonna take more abuse in the shop. But uh, at the end of the day, the back panel, I don't think I need it that thick, so I'm gonna save a little bit of uh, material and just go with a quarter inch thick back panel. So I reset the router with a quarter inch bit and cut the dados for the back panels. All right, moving on to the rails, I ripped them to width, and of course I set up a stop block to make sure they were all cut to the exact same length and then set up to cut the tenons. To cut the tenons, I set up a sacrificial fence to protect my main fence from the dado blade. Then I used a scrap piece to do a few test cuts to dial in the thickness of the tenon for a perfect fit. And once I had the fit dialed in, I used that same setting to cut the rest of them. Then to trim the shoulders to their final size, I just did that at the bench with some hand tools. I did a little test fit and they were just a little bit too tight so I used a shoulder plane to kind of finesse the, uh, the fit a little bit until I got just the perfect fit. All 
All right, now that I have all the joinery cut, it was time to do a test fit. So I did a little pre-assembly to make sure everything was gonna go together. And also I could use that pre-assembly to help me figure out uh, how the rest of the panels and joinery needed to be cut. Now that I have it all assembled, I'm gonna use that assembly to mark out exactly where I need to cut the dados and all the rails for the panels to go into. I'm using a scrap piece that I milled to the same thickness as the rails to do a test cut for the dado to make sure that everything lines up. The dados on the leg needs to line up with the dados on the rails for the panel to fit in perfectly. Looks like everything's lining up really well, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rest of the dados and the rails. Now it's time to make the side panels. So I resawed some walnut from some eight quarter stock uh, to get the thickness I needed, sent it through the planer to smooth it all out and glued them together. All right, to get that green and green cloud lift curve in there on the rails, I am just making a plywood template that I'm going to use with a bearing bit on my router. And to get the cloud lift shape just right, I'm just taking my time to finesse it with a file until I'm happy with how it looks. Now that I'm happy with the shape, I'm going to trace it onto my workpiece and then rough it out at the bandsaw so the router bit doesn't have to do as much work. I double stuck tape my workpiece and the template together and I'm just using a pattern bit with the router to make a perfect copy. I changed the bit in my router to a 3 8 inch grooving bit so I can use the bearing on it to follow the shape of the cloud lift and cut a dado in the top of that rail so it can accept the panel. The side panels are going to be made up of uh, this warped piece of plywood that I'm cutting and shop sawn veneers from walnut. Uh, I think once I glue the walnut veneers onto the plywood and get it in the frame that it's going to hold it pretty flat so I'm not too worried about this slight little warp. Now that the side panel is out of the vacuum bag, I sanded off all the tape and used my rail piece to trace the shape onto the panel. And then I just used the bandsaw to cut it out. All right, one last thing I need to do before assembling the side panels is cut a decorative uh, taper on the bottom of the legs. So I'm just using the bandsaw to do that, and then once I get it cut, I'm going to go over to my bench and use the hand plane to take out the saw marks. But I think those turned out pretty good. Time for a little bit of assembly. But I pre-finished the walnut panel, so that way if there's any shrinkage due to uh, the changes in humidity, uh, there won't be any raw wood show up around the edges. Before I assembled the top, I needed to create some notches in the front face frame for the drawer dividers. So I set up my dado stack to cut them, and moved the fence each time to set the drawer width. Now 
Now that the notches are cut, I'm gluing up the front face frame and I'm just taking extra care to make sure everything is lined up perfectly. If the top uh, rail is off from the bottom rail, the uh, cabinet won't glue up square. All right now, time to glue up the back panel. It's the same procedure as the front panel. I'm taking the same care. Uh, those vertical dividers are extra supports for the drawer dividers to attach to. They also add a decorative look by breaking up the large back panel. So I let those panels dry overnight and now I'm assembling the entire case. Now those notches that I cut earlier are getting filled in with little face frame dividers. These small openings will be for drawers to store the router bits. I'm screwing cleats to the front and back panels to attach the bottom to. That little strip of wood is the same thickness as the bottom and I'm just using it as a spacer to make sure everything is getting aligned properly. Alright, and then I dropped the bottom in through the top and just screwed it down to those cleats. I'm cutting a dado in these boards for the trays that will hold the router bits to ride in. These will basically act as drawer glides. I'm using this scrap plywood as spacer blocks to be sure that I install the drawer glides at the exact same height on each side. And I cut spacers for each drawer height. All right, there's one side in, now we just need to do the other side and do the same thing on the center dividers. Alright, I put a little glue on the edges of those center dividers and they slide into dados I cut before I assembled it. And they just needed a little persuasion, but in the end it all fit together nicely. Moving on to the top, I wanted a nice sturdy top so I used the vacuum bag to laminate two pieces of plywood together. Once the glue is dried, I pulled it out of the vacuum bag and cut it to its final size. To dress up the edge of the top, I ripped a few strips of walnut to use as edge banding. I wanted to do something a little bit different than a miter, so I used the bandsaw to cut a bridal joint. And I just cleaned the waist up with a chisel. And then for the mating piece, I cut the shoulders off at the table saw. All right, then a little glue and clamps for the final assembly of the top. All 
Originally, I was going to round over the fingers a little bit to add kind of a decorative green and green look. But after doing a test fit, I decided to just cut them off with the pole saw. Uh, I didn't want anything sticking out that I could catch on while I was trying to operate the router table. I'm going to use an Incra router lift for this table. So I cut an MDF template to test fit the Incra before committing to cutting into my top. Once I was happy with the fit, I double stick taped the template down to my top and routed out for the flange. And then I used a jigsaw to cut out the center. I don't know about you, but I feel like the jigsaw is a savage tool. It just leaves a gnarly cut. For dust collection, I'm going to use the Incra's Clean Sweep box. On the Incra's router tabletop, it is designed to face the other direction to be compatible with Incra's space wasting fence. So to make it fit my application, I use my template as a spacer to bridge the gap between the top opening for the router lift and the shape of the uh, Incra Clean Sweep box. If you want to see more about how the Incra lift system works, I'd recommend checking out Guy Dunlap's video from Guy's Workshop. He did a great uh, video demonstrating on how it works and all the little cool things you can do with this system. Now I need to cut a dado for the T-Track to sit in. My dado blade is not wide enough to do it in one pass, so I snuck up on it until I got a good snug fit. To install the track for the fence to slide forward and backward, I needed a dado that only went halfway-ish through the top. So I clamped some plywood around the track to use as a guide for the router. For the depth of the dado, I just used the T-track to set the turret stop. All right, then I just squared up the corners with the chisel and screwed the track in place. All right, moving on to the fence. I'm cutting a series of dados to create a support bracket to attach the adjustable fence to. I'm drilling out a port for dust collection. I'm just drilling some holes for some bolts to go through for the T-Track to slide in. And then I drilled a hole for the dust port to go through and then I just screwed it right to the flange of the dust port. Alright, once I got my hose attached, I'm just screwing my block of wood to the back of the fence. And I'm only going to use screws, not any kind of glue. That way, if something gets stuck in there or plugs up the, the dust collection, I can uh, take it apart and uh, clean it out. To hook up the Incra Clean Sweep, I just used a 4-inch hole saw to drill a hole through the back of the cabinet, and then there will be a T that will hook the uh, fence dust collection and the Clean Sweep collection together. I glued up two pieces of plywood together to bake up the thickness I needed for the adjustable fence. Then I cut a dado on the front and back to accept the T-tracks. Once the fence was completely assembled with the T-tracks, I cut it in half so that way I had a left and right wing that was adjustable. The T-Track is held in place with adjustable star knobs. To attach the top, I made wooden L-brackets to slide into a dado I had cut earlier into the rail of the cabinet on the front and the back. 
With the dust collection installed, it was a really tight fit, but with some four letter persuasion, I got them installed in place. Now that the cabinet is complete, I'm moving on to the drawer fronts. I'm rough cutting out the shape of the drawers to reduce router bit load and tear out. Then I'll attach the template to my work pieces and route an exact copy with the pattern bit. All right, I changed out bits so the bearings on the bottom and the cutters on the top, and I'm just routing out a uh, dado for the drawer bottom to attach to. Right, I only made one template, but this template has all the information I need on it. It has the general shape of the drawer, it has the uh, dado for the drawer bottom to slide into, and then that circle with the slot in it, that's for the drawer pole. So this drawer pole needs to go on the other side, so I'm going to take it off and then flip it around and double stick tape that uh, template back onto the face of the drawer so I can route out for the drawer pole now. And then I just squared everything up with a chisel. The drawer bottoms are going to be joined to the face with a wedge tenon. So I'm cutting the tenon with a dado blade at the table saw and then I'll cut the slots for the wedges at the band saw. However, before I cut the slots and while I had the dado blade set up, I cut the dados for the drawer sides. I milled up some quarter inch maple for the drawer sides and glued them in place. While the glue was drying, I turned my attention to making the bit holders. I didn't want to drill holes in the drawers themselves because as my router bit selection changes, I want the configuration of the drawers to change with them. So I opted to make inserts to fit inside the drawers so I could change them as needed as my router bit collection grew. To make the handle, I milled some walnut down to thickness so that it would fit snugly into the drawer front. Then I made a jig in the shape of the handle and used it to mark the shape on the workpiece. To prevent tear out on the router, I used a bandsaw to remove the bulk of the material. The little pixels for the safety police. Then of course, I cleaned it all up at the router table with the pattern bit. I cut them a little long just because bigger pieces are a little safer to hang on to. So now I'm marking and cutting them to fit. All right, I put a little glue on them and now I found the largest mallet I could to gently tap them into place. I need to make the wedges to go into the tenons to attach the drawer faces to the drawer bottoms. So I angled the blade over a few degrees to slice a wedge shaped piece. Alright, I added a little glue and tapped the drawer front in place and then used the clamp to really drive those wedges all the way in to really hold that uh, joint tight. All right, the last thing I needed to build is the door. I built it in a similar way to the sides. Uh, I made a template for the cloud lift shape and just used the router bit just like I did before to make that shape.
And then I cut a dado on all the rails and styles for a walnut panel to sit into. And then to join everything together, I just use a tenon to fit into the groove. All right, and then I use some European style hinges to attach the door. There you go. Thanks for watching.